My name is Samuel Bernal. I am Vice President for Intervision Communications. The mood, I think it's a it's an emotional breakdown for our community because uh, there is everything is uncertain right now. There's a confusion. People don't know really uh, what are what are those changes going to be? When are they going to happen? So when something is not certain, it creates anxiety in in our community too. And anxiety is not very good for for the economy or for the peace of a community. Creo que el, el humor de la gente que yo percibo es de un bajón emocional en esta administración porque hay, hay mucha incertidumbre, no se sabe qué va a pasar en cuanto a estos cambios de inmigración, no se sabe cuándo y cuando eso sucede, cuando hay incertidumbre, se provoca ansiedad y cuando hay ansiedad esto repercute a nivel económico y también en la paz de una comunidad. Yes, I think they, they can tell a difference between the, the federal speech and the local speech, the local government. Um, they, there has been different efforts to make our community feel welcome by different cities or counties and every time there is a, a an friendly immigration statement or any press release that is talking about uh, our local government being friendly with the community is something very appreciated. They, we can tell with our listeners that they feel welcome, they feel, uh, they feel some peace in their homes and, and that is good. I think we are lucky to be in this valley because we see a lot of organizations and churches and business that often express their support to the immigrant community. Eh, sí, creo definitivamente que la gente ve la diferencia entre lo que es el discurso a nivel federal y lo que es el discurso político también a nivel local y, y localmente creo que ellos perciben esa bienvenida hacia los inmigrantes ellos agradecen todo esfuerzo que se hace ya sea por un condado o por una ciudad cuando muestran ese, esa apreciación a los inmigrantes ya sea a través de un estatuto o a través de un comunicado cuando hacen ese esfuerzo de mostrar o de expresar su amistad hacia los inmigrantes es algo que trae paz a sus casas que les da seguridad Entonces yo creo sinceramente que somos afortunados de estar en este valle en donde varias organizaciones y varios negocios y varias iglesias han mostrado su apoyo a la comunidad inmigrante. I'm Jennifer Smith. I'm an immigration attorney here in Glenwood Springs. I've been practicing law for 17 years and here in the valley for 10. And the biggest difference we've noticed in our practice uh, since the new administration took office has been a little element of panic. A lot of people unsure of what to expect. I think the unsettled nature of the information that's coming out about immigration stuff has made it very difficult for people to kind of plan and figure out how they want to proceed for their families. So, you know, they the current issue is DACA and the question is, okay, well, is DACA gonna end? When is it gonna end? When are we gonna hear about it? And so, it creates this element of anxiety for everyone because they're really not sure what to do day to day. And obviously as a community and an economy, we want stability. We want people committed to being here and living their lives and buying homes and starting businesses. And so that has definitely had an impact as far as people feeling really unsettled. Um, and I think the message for us has been don't panic, prepare. Well, there's so many different things being discussed. We have increased enforcement, we have travel bans, we have possibly the termination of DACA, we have increased interviews being required for all forms of petitions, we have so many different things being discussed in immigration land, essentially. Some of it policy-based, some of it would be changes to the law. I think Overall, big picture, changes to the valley would be if we limit the amount of immigration to the valley, 
or we lose a large portion of our population in the valley, it will impact us negatively, economically speaking. Um, we need the people that we have here that are working and going to schools and contributing, paying their taxes, doing all of these things that make our community stronger. Uh, so I do worry about the negative impacts if we suddenly lose a large portion of our population. Um, for example, if we lost all of our DACA students in the Valley, um, that would be a huge loss to businesses like ourselves and in the community. Um, and personally and professionally, it would impact us too. Um, of course, there are good things that can happen in immigration law, and there are still discussions happening about comprehensive immigration reform, which I think make the most sense. Our immigration system is very complicated. There's no easy sound bites, and picking away at little pieces of it is actually making our system less workable. So when I think about comprehensive immigration reform, I think about a benefit to all of us. Um, I think about benefits to us if we can find paths for the people that are in the U.S. to stay here legally, assuming they meet certain requirements and don't have certain criminal histories. I think all those things could be benefits. Um, there's so many different priorities for our country right now, it's hard to know which of these is the best step forward. Um, I just hope that we can come up with something that is, you know, both humanitarian and is something that helps us grow and be a stronger community instead of kind of ripping us apart or forcing people to hide in the shadows. When they start getting panicky, they start getting advice from people who aren't lawyers and then they get into trouble. So I always like to take the opportunity to remind people, don't get your legal advice from your friends and your neighbors. Get it from a you know, reliable, preferably licensed attorney. <laughs> so you're getting the best option for your family and not just, you know, kind of a haphazard response. <laughs>